Bezat Hashem, what is the big deal about tonight? Up till now, no music, no weddings, no shaving, no then you can, can't play your guitar. And all of a sudden comes one night and everything turns topsy-turvy. There's happy and there's weddings and there's simchot, there's smachot. What's the difference? When Yaakov Avinu came to Mitzrayim and there was famine on Yisrael and Yosef found out that the viceroy of Egypt was really his son Yosef, his long-lost son Yosef, and he comes down to Egypt and Pharaoh he was very happy because in the beginning they thought that Yosef was a slave, but now they see Yosef was the son of a king. This is not just the viceroy, for sure, the son of a king. So he wants to meet who this king of Israel is. Yaakov Avinu, our only father Yaakov. So they bring this old man, he sees Yaakov is a very old man, and Pharaoh asks him, how old are you? He says, I'm 130 years old. He says, I've had 130 difficult years. Well, it might sound to someone like Yaakov Avinu was complaining, but Yaakov Avinu is just reporting something very objective. What, he had his problems with Esav, and his problems with Dina, and he had a problem with Lovon, and every single day, Yaakov Avinu says, Love him. The, the, in the winter, he suffered cold nights, and in the summer, horrendous difficult life. Now he comes down, it looks like it's bad. It looks like it's leaving, leaving Israel. But we know in Emunah, Yaakov Avinu teaches us and it comes out, this is the light of Rebbe Shimon Bar Yochai. What's that bonfire we lit tonight? We went around the bonfire, and it's light, and it's warmth. We got close to the bonfire, we feel warmth. This is the warmth of Emunah. This is the light of Emunah. And this is what the Arizal tells us, in the memory of Rebbe Shimon Bar Yochai, before we have every festive meal, at Kiru Sudad Menlutav. We're now having a suda of Emunah. Tonight is a night of Emunah. So Paro, Tells Yaakov Vino, he said 130 years. Then what happens? Yaakov Vino is now, he's got his son Levi and his son Yehuda, and they make a coil in Goshen, and Am Yisrael is multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. And he's got children and grandchildren and great great children. How long did Yaakov Vino live until? 147. He had 17 years in Egypt. 17 is Gematria Tov. So we have now 33 days, tough. We have 17 more days until Kabbalat HaTorah. This is the Simcha of Am Yisrael. These 17 days, and this also turns around, when does the 17 days begin? On Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai's yard site. What do we learn by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai? When Kfod Rav spoke before, he mentioned something I had in mind to mention Bo Hashem but pre revere When I with real Torah, real Torah gives birth to the Torah. Kodolov told a story about the Orachim Kadosh when finally went to Israel and with such trembling with Kedusha, he crawled all the way up on the mountains. The, God, the students of the Orachim say if that mountain were paved with knives, the Orachim would have crawled up on knives, a road paved with knives to get to Rabbi Shimon. Who was that Or Chaim HaKadosh, Rabbi Chaim ben Atar? <clears throat> he was the leader of the entire generation in Nusayn Shabbayim. He was in Morocco, and the Baal Shem Tov, the founder of the Hasidic movement, is the Or Chaim for the Ashkenazim. He was in the Ukraine, in Ukraine now, where the war is going on. And it was Shabbat in the afternoon, the time of Sudash Shlishit, and the middle of Baal Shem Tov, you don't cry on Shabbat. He had a tear coming down his eyes. They said, Rebbe, what's the matter? The Rebbe should have a tear on Shabbat. The Rebbe is always so happy on Shabbat. And he said, the lights of the West have just been extinguished. What do you mean the lights of the West? Then Morocco was for to Mahab. Then Morocco was the West because it's west of Eretz Yisrael. For the West, it's the West of where you get to the Mediterranean. And then the, 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 all the, the importance was Europe and North Africa. He says, the lights was, how did the Baal Shem Tov know that? At that time, on Shabbat in the afternoon, they got the secret of the mikvah. The secret power, what happens to a person when they go in mikvah. There's only one person in generation that knows this secret. And he got the secret. He knew that if as great as he was, the Orachim HaKadosh was greater. But he says, if Shemayim, they're giving up the secret, then the Orachim HaKadosh must not be here anymore. 
And they found out by the time the word came and by the word courier, there was no telegraph there. It came Tuesday afternoon that the word came, someone came across the Mediterranean. Tuesday afternoon, they found out that the Orachayim is no longer worth it. Baal Shem Tov, he felt this. This is the Orachayim Kadosh. This is the Orachayim Kadosh that he, he felt this Kedusha. The higher a level person is, they could feel the holiness. And what's the holiness? Somebody might ask a, a, a question. Okay, it looked like Yaakov Avinu, Yaakov Avinu is happy with coming down to Egypt, that's bad. But we learn, he says, Tov, the Tov years, and it looks like Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, bad, the Romans chased him, they wanted to kill him. How did he get, what, what he did, the Zohar, Shimon gave the light of the Zohar. He was in a cave for 13 years with his son, Elazar. And they learned Torah in a cave. And he came out of the cave, and it was so dry, they didn't have clothes to wear. So what they would do, you can't, you can't learn Torah without clothes. They would cover themselves in sand, they would dig a pit, and it was sand up to their neck. The only thing outside was their faces, Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Lazar. So when they finally came out, when they heard, a bot call came, Rabbi Shimon Yochai could understand the words of the animals, the words of birds. Two birds came, and two birds came that said that Caesar died, and there's a new Caesar, and they're not hunting him anymore. They were hunting, Rabbi Shimon Yochai, Rabbi Shimon Yochai was so strong, we're not going to listen to Romans, they're going to do that, the Romans wanted to stop Torah, no way, no way. And they chased him, they chased him all over, and they finally hid in this cave. He came out of the cave, his whole skin, had these tremendous deep rivulets in it. You know, if you ever had a little cut and you have salt water in a cut, ooh, does it burn. This was Rabbi Shimon's whole, whole body. His father-in-law, who, who was a Kadosh, you know, Rabbi Shimon's father-in-law, Rabbi Pinchas, Rabbi Pinchas ben Yair, he was the, the father-in-law of Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai. He came and he cried. And he cried in one of his tears. It, it stung Rabbi Shimon. He says, he says, he says, Oy vavoy, I should see you in such suffering. He says, Oy vavoy, Bo Hashem, you should see me in such suffering. Such suffering for Hashem? Such suffering for Hashem? This all suffering. Where did he get this from? Where did Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai get this Amunah from? You know who his teacher was? Rabbi Akiva. Do you know why we had Sfirat the Omer? First 33 days. Rabbi Akiva's 24,000 students died. Why did they die? They didn't properly respect one another. So wait a second, hold it, hold it. Time out the field. The countries and the government, they know if someone does something really bad, treason, high treason, and not every country has capital punishment. Capital punishment means death penalty. No, they argue back and forth, and Israel is a big argument now. If the worst terrorists that killed whole families, whether to kill them or not to kill them, capital punishment, not capital punishment. And we see Rabbi Akiva's 24,000 students, they got killed for what? Not properly respecting one another. They properly respect one another. She said, what's the big deal? They were holy Tanoim. They were holy Tanoim. They knew that Rabbi Akiva, Sheb knows, Rabbi Akiva is the greatest thing since Moshe Rabbeinu. Rabbi Akiva brought down the oral Torah. He codified the Mishnah, which later became the Gemara, which later became Rambam, Shetchanol. It all started for Rabbi Akiva. But you can't have Torah if you don't respect one another. They all died. So now Rabbi Akiva has five new students. You know his five new students? It's not 24,000, it's 24,000. But Rabbi Akiva is 100 years old. His students die. Can you imagine if you got your life's work? You built a big institution, you built a yeshiva, you built a great company. And when you're 100 years old, you want to give the company to your, your son, your grandsons, your great-grandsons, and the company goes bankrupt? You say, my whole life worked down the drain? Rabbi Akiva kind of says, whole life worked down the drain? No. With Emunah, he started brand new, made a new start at 100. And his new start, what did his new start bring? Rabbi Meir Balanis, that was one of the students. Rabbi Yudah Bar Lai, that was another one. Rabbi Lazar Ben Shemor, that was another one. Rabbi Yossi Ben Halafdin, another one. But number five was Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. And Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai took the light of Imura from Rabbi Akiva. And when we light the fire, in honor of Rabbi Shimon Yochai, we light the fire of Imura in our hearts. This is the power of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. And Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, where does the Muna come from? You know, there's a, 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 a halacha in Torah, very important halacha. And it's something that 
invokes such divine, divine... Uh, you think when the Chavetz Chaim, the greatest rabbi the last hundred years, and the Chavetz Chaim could have written about laws of Kashrut, and these laws, no, he wrote about Lashon Ha, wrote a book, the Chavetz Chaim. Remember the Chavetz Chaim says Chavetz Chaim? They were talking about evil talk. Chavetz Chaim. Why did he do that? Because he knew how important one bit of Lashon Hara, there's 31 mitzvot involved in it. 14 positive mitzvahs, 17 negative mitzvahs. You knew how important it is for every one of us to love one another because any type of Lashon Hara, it's a breach of Yahavta Le'echa Kamocha. And it's a breach of Emunah. You can't love another Jew if you don't have a munah. See, what's the question of love another Jew and have a munah? You believe we say, Avinu Shabbat Shemayim. Avinu Shabbat Rabbi Akiva, he, he made a prayer when the great rabbis, Rabbi Akiva was a Baal Tshuva, he was the son, a, a son of righteous converts, Akiva ben Yosef again. And all they prayed, there was no red in Eretz Yisrael, and the greatest rabbis prayed for Ray. And Rabbi Akiva says, Avinu Malkeinu, my father in heaven, give us rain. This opened up the sky, and this is the power of Rabbi Akiva's Emuna. When Rabbi Akiva, the Gemara Tractate Brocho, tells us that Rabbi Akiva was dying, it was Erev Yom Kippur. And we read about this on Tisha B'av. And the Romans made this excruciating torture. And while they were torturing, he was in Shema Yisrael and he had a smile on his face. He says, Rabbi, how can you smile? He says, I waited my whole life for this moment of Emuna. He waited for the the Shem's going to give it to him now. This was Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai's teacher. Rabbi Shimon's whole life was devoted to what she was great, bringing down the secrets of Shemayim, the Holy Zohar. But Rabbi Akiva, we see all through the Gemara, when other Chachomim, their Machmir, he is Mekel, I'll give you an example. There's a halacha, if girls can wear perfume on Shabbat, it's called Shemana Fal Simon. And then Ari and the Chachomim say, no, 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 this is only for a rich girl. Because a regular girl, a poor girl, they can't have this only for a daughter of a king. Only a daughter of a king can wear this fancy perfume, Shemin of El Simon, the oil of persimmon. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai says, everybody's soil is a daughter of a king. We see that in halachot, the many halachot, where I don't want to go into a particular halachot, in Moksa, where the Sevi drag a chair and the chair puts a crease in the, in the sand. If you don't have a pay for, you can do it. You can't do it. Rabbi Shimon said, nah, it's no problem. He didn't intend to do it. Many times this homer, Rabbi Shimon's may kill. Ah, but now when you come to Nistar, when you come to holiness, Rabbi Shimon is the biggest machmir because holiness is Dineshama. And in Dineshama, two things have to happen. The emunah comes from the neshama, and loving another Jew comes from the neshama. Why, if you look at a body, guy looks at a body, this guy is, this, even I, think, I remember the, the, this is your here in Great Neck, in Great Neck, they have the Iranian community. But in Great Neck, they're mostly mashadim. And I go to Los Angeles, and they're mostly Tehranim. And they have a joke amongst the Iranians, you know what intermarriage is? When a Tehranim marries a mashadim. They're both Iranian, they're both. What's it differentiate? Jews differentiate from one another. Uh, to have a munah, you can't look at bodies. This is Tehrani, this is Mashadi, this is Bukhari, this is Irani, this is Ashkenazi, this is Sfari, this is religiousness, not religious. Back in Israel, it's crazy now. When the white Mashiach, the right against the left, the race, you got the left. It's it. Oh, I got one political party, Am Yisrael. Am Yisrael Chai, Am Yisrael Echad, Hashem Echad, Ushmo Echad. And we say, we're we're one nation. We have one nation. How can we feel we're one nation? You look at this one, this one's here, this one's this, got this opinion, that's opinion. If you look at his neshama, that's your brother, that's your sister. And that's because Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai tells us in chapter, in, in, in Breshit, the first chapter of the Zohar, he says that the neshama is chalek eloch mima'al. Wow. You know what your neshama is? It's a tiny bit of Hashem. Every single Jew in this room is walking around with a tiny microchip, a spiritual microchip that's different between a live person and a person in Bar Minan, Chath is that divine spark. And when Hashem wants a person up in Shemayim, He takes the divine spark up in Shemayim, and the shell, which just stays here. Can you imagine, go to Kennedy Airport, and he says, great big 737, Great big 737, but there's a problem. 
It's got these big wings and this big fuselage. No engine. Can you get off the ground? You take a body without a neshama, it's not going anywhere. What takes our prayers up is not our arms and our feet and our hands, and we, we dance and we dance and sing, but it's the neshama. And where Ahabat Yisrael comes from, a person cannot have Ahabat Yisrael if he or she looks at bodies. You have to look at neshama. Look past the body. Look at the smile of that other Jew, the, 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 the good word. And you smile at another Jew, you get a smile back. It's automatic. The, the, the most contagious, not contagious disease. Rashi says that a good measure is 500 times more powerful than so if a person frowns and someone feels insulted, when you smile, you make the person feel 500 times better. And how can you smile another person? You're colorblind. You don't see Ashkenazi, Spardi, Bukhari, Kafkazi. You don't see this. You see the neshama. That's what Rabbi Shimon Hai teaches us. And you love the other person. And the power, this is the power we quote the Rav explained the power of Rebbe Shimon Bar Yochai to, for the people that don't have kids, have kids. For people that need refuah, have refuah. And as I'm saying this, anyone should need refuah, they should have refuah shlema. And everyone needs children, they have children. Everyone needs good shiduchim for the children, wonderful shiduchim. And everyone that needs fantastic panasai, shab panasai, be able to marry all your kids with keys to apartments in Eretz Yisrael and no debt. Amen. My heart's wishes for the best. When we love every other Jew, that's that's a Rabbi Kivit. And this is what Rabbi Shimon says, Kol Yisrael b'nei Melochim. He says, they're all the sons of Melochim. It's just not something nice. According to the Zohar, it's the real thing. Okay, so my physical DNA, I got the DNA, they checked my chromosome chart. And again, okay, the DNA of my mom, the DNA of my dad, may they rest in peace. But if someone would check the spiritual DNA of my neshama, it's from Hashem. It's Hashem, it's divine. And if we had a stethoscope that could hear the neshama, it's the neshama that's making our heartbeat. People say, where's the Hashem? Hashem's right there, make my heartbeat. If I would put a stethoscope to my heart, it would sound like this. Yudke, Vovke, Yudke, Vovke, Yudke, Vovke. That's a shabby in the heart. That's right. It's not, that's a shabby. He's right there with us. So that's the Yudke, Vovke in me, and the Yudke, Vovke in you. And that's Yudke, Vovke. We're seeing each other, and right away, that's my brother, that's my brother, that's my sister, that's my sister. And it's the most beautiful mitzvah. That's Rabbi Shimon. And this has, when you have Avat Yisrael, ah, wow, got lots of mothers and fathers here. Let me ask you, mom and dad, what makes you happier than anything? Imagine you come home, you don't know that you got, you got Moishele is in the fourth grade. Moishele can't understand his math homework. So that asking anybody, Sula, she's already in eighth grade. So we come home and you see Sula sitting at the table with Moishele, teaching him his mad. Mom, do you feel so great? Look at my kids, the one helping the other. Or your kids are already married. And you know, one of your kids had a difficulty. And you go to visit one of your kids and the other one is there is helping them. They got a leak in the roof and they're helping repair. Look, wouldn't it be so good? The way they help each other there, they're with each other. Okay, how do you feel when your kids are fighting? Does anything get on your nerves more than when your kids are fighting? Well, just know that Hashem is a more loving parent than any of us. And Hashem doesn't have nachat when we fight. The power of Lag Omer, when we're together with the flame of Rabbi Shimon, the flame of Emunah, is the power for refuah. The power. People say, well, I see people are still sick. Somebody had a kasha on Lag Omer. True story. Family goes up and they have a brand new SUV. Let's say it for the family vehicle, one of the, with the brushy, I know in Israel, they call it SUV, but the utility vehicle. So like a family, we used to call it when I was a kid, a station wagon. Hey, it's that Mitsubishi. Yeah, van, okay, good. And they go up to Miron, they live in Beit Shemesh, family from Beit Shemesh, Ramat Beit Shemesh, they go up to Miron. And they go to Rabdeh, they go to Rabbi Shimon, and they're on the way back. And a truck runs them off the road, and the car flips twice, but Baruch Hashem, the airbags, they, they create the airbags, say, there was a mother, father, and five sons. The mother and the father, they come out with a scratch. Son number one, no scratch. Son number two, fine. Son number three, son number four, 
Son number five, seven years old, he's unconscious. So right away, take him to the hospital, this and that. And they see, check him out, this, that they think he's got a concussion. So they do a CAT scan. What do they find when they do a CAT scan on his brain? They find a malignant tumor. They would have never found that. This little boy, he didn't complain about anything. He didn't feel anything. The neurologist said, had they not found that tumor, in a matter of two weeks, that little boy would have started having excruciating pain because that tumor it was still small. It would be growing, growing, growing until it crushed the brain. In a matter of four weeks, that little boy would have been blind. In a matter of chas v'sholem, chas v'sholem, chas v'sholem, six to eight weeks, he'd be on a wing, angel's wing to the oil of But look at this. The cape. This is what we learned from Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the light of Emunah. Sometimes, a seeming difficult. This is Yaakov Avinu. He's not complaining he says 130 years. This is not Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai when he comes out after 13 years. And then they come off to 17. Then 17. This is the power of the 70 days that we now have the schut of Rashti and then we receive Torah. But sometimes before we get something really, really good, there is a difficulty. And this difficulty is a test of Amunah. But one thing Rabbi Akiva taught us, call my de Rahmana Tavit Avid the Tavavid, that everything Hashem does is for the best. People say, What's a car total loss? Brand new car costs I don't know, in American prices cost under fifty thousand dollars. And in Israel, you buy a car in Israel, you get together, you buy pay taxes and buy a jeep for the army. It's not like the prices in here, it's like double the price. Pay big taxes. And the car is total. What's that little boy's life? An operation. They had brain surgery, successfully took the tumor out. Also a miraculous thing. Little boy, I said this story in Beit Shemesh. So a woman comes up with a 14-year-old boy. She says, I'm the mother. Rabbi, in case you get up, she says, if anybody thinks the story's not true, I'm the mother. And this is the boy. It was already seven years later. Ben Pawat Yosef, the light of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, it is the light of emunah is the light that fires our souls. It's the light that ignites our souls. What is the power of emunah? The power of emunah is our own connection with the Rebbe Shalom and our own connection with each other. Because once again, if we don't have emunah, that we're all the sons and daughters of Hashem, we have the same Father in heaven, then we can't believe we're brothers and sisters. The moment we know that we're Am Yisrael, Am Echad, Echad, and that's why we got Torah. This is the one time where Am Yisrael did have Bachloket and Har Sinai. Am Echad Echad. We're together. Holy brothers and sisters. I love Briarwood. I love the Bukhari community. I should get an honorary Bukhari certificate. I, know. I love this Kila. One of most Mikan Paisuel. If Am Yisrael is, is wonderful, that the Kila Bukhari. No words. No words. But ask one thing. Some people say, oh, do this mitzvah, and you take a Kabbalah that you can learn Torah. Or that. I ask one Kabbalah, B'schut Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, that no one in this community should say something bad about anyone else in this community. Let's start with the community. Let's start that Briarwood should see Avasi soil. And you know what's going to happen? When Briarwood has obviously soil, it's going to spread to all of Queens. Then it's going to spread to New York. New York, the Jews in New York, what's the percentage of Jews in the United States that in New York? Maybe New York is at least half of American Jewry. Okay? And it's good. And it'll spread all over. By this, Avat Yisrael in this community, it just starts. We light the spark. We just lit the bonfire. Like the same spark of Emunah, that we're all brothers and sisters. I want to say anything bad about a brother or sister because it makes our father in heaven sad. And by this spark lit here, and we'll have Achdut here, we'll be together here, it'll be all of Am Yisrael. This fire will spread to all of Am Yisrael, and Hashem will bring us Mashiach Tzidkenu, and our holy base of Migdash be in our days. Amen.